Nowadays, air superiority requires a new approach that demands strategic flexibility and experimentation. Already well aware of this, the U.S. Air Force is betting not only on the current fleet, but also on future fighters. Right now, these are being developed by talented teams of engineers from major U.S. companies to widen the technological gap between the U.S. and potential adversaries China and Russia. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at what's going on with NGAD and find out what technologies will make it the most powerful iron bird of the 2030s. Since the creation of combat aircraft capable of destroying battleships, the military has realized that the main battlefield is not on the water, not even on land, but in the sky. And while some continued to insist on the need to build even more heavy ships, more forward-looking strategists seize the revolutionary opportunity to realize the Navy's full potential through aviation. After all, in the fight against the most fierce ground invasion, it's the Air Force that's able to ensure dominance on the battlefield, even without a significant amount of infantry under the wing. Aviation is able to significantly thin out the enemy's ground forces and destroys supply chains and infrastructure, which will quickly take them out of the game not to mention the moral impact on the Army. After the Second World War, the fighter race did not stop for even a second, and engineers came up with more and more features that would breathe new life into even the older generations of the masters of the sky. Time passed, and the threats of the future required not just a unique aircraft for superiority in the sky, but a whole range of different systems capable of working as a whole. It's this idea that runs like a red thread through the concept of the latest American steel giants. In 2008, the U.S. Navy released the first bit of news on the sixth generation, the F-AXX fighter, designed to replace the old Boeing F-A-18E, F Super Hornet fleet, and become a reliable support for the fresh Lockheed Martin F-35C. The U.S. Air Force, meanwhile, has also been busy creating an entirely new concept for the FX manned fighter, better known today as the NGAD program. In the spring of 2013, DARPA, or Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, made an attempt to combine the concepts of the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force by developing the ultimate X-plane. But in the same year, the RAND Corporation recommended that the U.S. military structures avoid joint programs in the development of the design of the sixth-generation aircraft. The RAND researchers concluded that the cooperation of services during joint programs in the past led to design compromises and a significant increase in the cost of vehicles than if two aircraft were created separately at once. Although, despite the parallel development of their aircraft and the significant differences between the ideas of the Air Force and the U.S. Navy regarding the concept of sixth-generation jet aircraft, both devices converge in some fundamental characteristics. These include artificial intelligence to assist the pilot in making decisions, advanced sensors connected in a single PNT, positioning navigation and timing system, and communication tools that allow data to be transferred between aircraft of both services, Navy and Air Force. But today we will focus on the Iron Bird of the U.S. Air Force. Next Generation Air Dominance is a broad initiative that aims to create a system of systems capable of providing the United States with tactical air dominance for decades to come. It includes a highly customizable optional platform with long-range enhanced survivability and next-generation modular sensor capabilities. Initially, everyone thought that we were talking only about a new aircraft, but in reality, it turned out that NGAT is not so much about one aircraft, but about several different manned and unmanned aerial vehicles that act as a support for the future multi-role fighter. NGAD's initial mission is to replace the F-22 fighter fleet, which led many to assume that the NGAD design would be as close to standard fighter airframes as possible. But a little later, military command clarified that the aircraft developed under the program may not look like traditional fighters, but be something completely unique. After all, in addition to replacing the F-22, the U.S. Air Force sees the issue of air supremacy and the development of a number of technologies implemented as a sixth-generation think tank as a key goal for the U.S. Air Force. For example, a larger aircraft, like the B-21 Stealth Bomber, is unlikely to be able to maneuver in the same way as a fighter jet, but it makes up for it with a directed energy weapon 
with multiple powerful engines producing a significant amount of electricity, even for such a futuristic weaponry, ensuring that no enemy enters the airspace guarded by this aircraft. Additionally, NGAD developers have repeatedly stated that the ability to change the shape of a fighter or its individual parts or elements is one of the properties of the airframe. In October of 2022, Lockheed Martin rolled out a new rendering of what the NGAD fighter could look like as part of an advertisement for the LMXT tanker that will support the future U.S. Air Force fleet. Lockheed showed an aircraft with a diamond wing and straight leading and trailing edges. The wing is closely connected with the elongated fuselage, which has one protruding cheekbone line and tapers sharply towards the nose of the vehicle, a single prominent chine line and tapers sharply towards the nose. Remarkably, all previously presented NGAD concepts agree that the fighter has no tail. This was done primarily not so much for reasons of the functionality of the structure, but for the sake of its invisibility to enemy radars. Although this doesn't exactly mean that with such a body the aircraft won't be able to have an impressive internal volume for fuel tanks, weapons, and sensors. Twin engines buried into the fuselage and diamond-shaped nozzles set at the top of the airframe act as an excellent stealth design tactic used to block the infrared plume from the aircraft and its nozzles for ground and other types of radars. There are also two shallow bulges on both sides of the central section of the fuselage, probably related to the engines. The engine air intakes aren't visible, due to which some experts suggested that they could be installed under the airframe, from below. Previously, such a decision also showed up on the concepts of the new generation of American fighters. Another version is the secrecy of the program, which is why Lockheed Martin simply decided not to demonstrate all the details of the design until the device was fully ready. Furthermore, the design of the air intake for the stealth aircraft almost always comes with a real challenge for its creators. It's expected that the fighter will use variable cycle engine, or VCE engines developed under the AETP, or Adaptive Engine Transition Program, and NGAP, or Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Programs, the visual results of which are scheduled for 2025. The proportionally long cockpit canopy has a low profile, so the crew will have limited visibility, especially from behind. But since the advent of upgraded distributed aperture systems, many cameras and sensors like the F-35, crew awareness is already extremely high. As for the flight range, the exact dimensions of the fighter and its carrying capacity, all these parameters are still strictly classified, so any assumptions here would be akin to reading tea leaves. At the same time, Air Force representatives mentioned the development of various versions of the NGAT aircraft. Long range, optimized for operations in the Indo-Pacific region, and conventional, shorter range, for European theaters of operations. Speaking about the weapons set for the sixth generation fighter, one cannot discount the increased interest of the US Air Force in laser weapons. The most realistic option seems to be placing directed energy guns in fighter nacelles to destroy incoming missiles. But researchers from the AFRL, or Air Force Research Laboratory, emphasize that the range of tasks for lasers will also include self-defense and close combat with other vehicles within sight. And even this list of potential uses for the laser on board could expand markedly when the U.S. Air Force reports on the results of practical uses for laser weapons on their latest fighters. In the meantime, Mother Nature has been and remains the most formidable enemy of these futuristic weapons due to their insufficient resistance to atmospheric conditions, which adversely affect the range and power of the directed beam of energy, invisibility to enemy radars, advanced artificial intelligence and the latest sensors, laser cannons? What else could this fighter be lacking? The answer is simple, a swarm of drones. NGAD will receive a swarm of semi-autonomous drones that act as loyal wingmen for the aircraft. They'll facilitate electronic warfare, suppressing enemy air defenses and greatly expand the range of sensors. Additionally, in the event of a threat to the life of the pilot and or fighter, one of the drones can sacrifice itself to level the playing field. In September of 2020, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force Will Roper announced the launch of a full-scale prototype of the NGAD fighter. Its main task is preliminary flight tests and testing of the main technologies of the future system of systems. Sources from some major military observers even reported a successful first flight with the prototype. However, there was no official confirmation of this. 
It is also unknown whether the prototype was a manned or unmanned aircraft. This summer, Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall announced the transition of NGAD to the next stage of development, which should result in operational capabilities of the device by 2030. Kendall also noted that the program has entered the EMD, or Engineering Manufacturing and Development phase, which is one step away from production. Today, the Air Force must choose the most successful of the options offered by leading companies and ensure its further development by determining the required number of aircraft and the amount of funds allocated for their purchase. If the program doesn't meet critical obstacles, then it risks going down in aviation history as an incredible feat of engineering and procurement in comparison with other aviation programs. The same F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, launched in October 2001, reached initial operational readiness only by 2015. What do you think? Will we be seeing a new generation of fighters before the 2030s? And will they be able to change the rules of the game? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.